Hi, welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on Irritable Bowel Syndrome, also often referred to as IBS. Please don't confuse it with IBD, which are inflammatory bowel disorders, and those are a very different category, and watch my other video on those two as well. So for Irritable Bowel Syndrome, it really is defined by chronic abdominal pain or discomfort and patients many times have either diarrhea or constipation or go from one to the other. There is no real rhyme or reason. One day they'll be constipated, the next day they'll have a lot of diarrhea and there is no known cause for it. However, risk factors can be multiple GI infections as well as food intolerances, which are many times the causative factor here. And we use an abbreviation called PODMAPS here, and that stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So let's now look into that. So fermentable is pretty self-explanatory. That's anything that's fermented, sauerkraut, kimchi, other things that come to mind right away. Oligosaccharides are also referred to as fructans, and don't confuse that with fructose. So fructans are uh, sugars that occur in things like wheat and rye, as well as onion and garlic. Disaccharides is lactose, so that's the lactose enzyme that comes from consuming dairy products, such as milk, cheese, yogurt, those kind of things. Then we have monosaccharides, which are simple sugars as fructose that occur in honey, apples, and high fructose corn syrup. And that's specifically um, now in a lot of processed food, we have a lot of high fructose corn syrup. And then polyols are sorbitol and mannitol, which are artificial sweeteners that many times you can find in something like Splenda or diet um, sodas of any kind of, um, of that regard. So a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, there are not really any diagnostic tests, but the diagnosis is made based on the patient's symptoms. And the, there is this thing called the Rome criteria, which is abdominal pain and or discomfort with two or more of these, which is that the abdominal pain or discomfort improves with defecation, or there is a change in stool frequency or onset. The patient might have other symptoms such as nausea or queasiness and then lots of bloating and flatulence can occur and there might be some urgency where the patient gets the trigger to use the restroom and then they really have to, to hurry to get there. And then more systemic kind of uh, symptoms that can happen will be fatigue, headache and sleep disturbances and many times patients who have a lot of stress in their life or suffer from anxiety and depression also suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. So it's almost, um, besides the food intolerances, lifestyle can play a big role in your gut health as well. And you've probably experienced that yourself at some point when you get really nervous or um, something stressful happens, your stomach doesn't feel good. And so there's a lot of relationship between stress and the digestive system. So, and then once we have the patient's uh, symptoms established, they're typically either uh, diagnosed with IBS with constipation or IBS with diarrhea, depending on which one is predominant, or they can have mixed irritable bowel syndrome. Treatment is keep a food diary and see if any of these FODMAPs are causing your symptoms or making them worse. Once you've identified that, you can eliminate those from the diet and change your diet and then hopefully the symptoms will decrease or maybe resolve completely. That many times happens in uh, patients with lactose intolerance, intolerance as I can personally testify to. <laughs> um, and then exercise always helps to decrease bloating and decrease flatulence. And then of course you wanna avoid gas producing foods that could contribute to this kind of bloating feeling and these um, abdominal discomfort. There are certain medications that are used in the treatment of anti of uh, irritable bowel syndrome when maybe the, the dietary changes are uh, not very easy to do 
and those are antispasmodics, so they decrease, they decrease GI motility. And then there is also loperamide, also known as Imodium, which decreases trends in time. So most of those are antispasmodics for patients with this kind of like abdominal discomfort. And then to decrease the, the transit time, that's usually for patients who have predominantly diarrhea-like symptoms. Thanks for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Also watch my other video on inflammatory bowel disorders, which I mentioned in the beginning are very different from irritable bowel syndrome and can be much more significant in terms of health consequences and signs and symptoms. Thanks for watching. See you soon.